most of all, I want to uh, thank our veterans for all that they have done for our country. And there's so many of them here today, and so many of you here to thank them on this day. So we all love and appreciate your service. You know, it's interesting. I was asked, what are you going to say today? As this is my last year as an elected official, I've decided after 24 years, it might be time to retire and let some young people take over. So I decided I wasn't going to put a speech together, but going to talk about my interaction with veterans over the years. But before I do that, I want to introduce the rest of the country to me. Sean Fine. Vanessa Keehan, George Lazo, and our Deputy Mayor, Lisa Lontag. You know, we get a little stipend, but it's really a volunteer job, and it's a tough job. I always tell my associates that you're in the middle of the bullseye, and every decision you make, you get some people who are happy, and there are always a few who are not. People who are not will stick with you shooting arrows for the rest of your career. So they're brave individuals who've done this. And thank you all for what you do. So what I what I decided today is again talk about my interaction with veterans over the years. In my first interaction, I was 12 years old, and I used to walk by the Air Force Recruiting Center. And I decided with one of my friends, Eric, to go inside one day and talk to the recruiters. I was going to try to sign up, but I think I was a little shocked. But I went inside and the Air Force was handing out Air Force recruiting cards. They were little like baseball cards and they had planes, airplanes and so forth. And I got, I started collecting them. I noticed on eBay, they're selling for like $100 a piece now. I wish my mother hadn't thrown them out like everything else that I collected when I was a kid. But that was my first interaction. And talking to those Air Force veterans who were there, I learned a lot of respect for people who served the nation and the country. My second interaction was with the veterans of Far Wars. Five years later, at 17, I was one of the winners of the Voice of Democracy contest. And what I did during the height of the Vietnam War is spoke about how veterans serve and how we should respect them. And I had to give the speech to the BFW, and I'll never forget how calming and reassuring they were and it made it easier for me at 17 year old to give a speech, which probably was the first speech I ever gave. And I talked about, I'll never forget my first paragraph was, democracy is the wings of freedom. We are the veterans and the soldiers are giving those wings to soar to infinite heights. But democracy will only be as strong as those who serve. They've saved our country many times from the Revolutionary War to the war in Afghanistan. And I have total respect for that. Five years later, I was employed at the Army Corps of Engineers as a civil engineer in Waltham, Massachusetts, Barracks. And I reported up to a general who oversaw the Northeast Regional Army Corps. And I gained tremendous respect because they were tremendous, they were very honest men with high and women, but there, at that time there were fewer women. Today, thank God, there's a lot more women serving because they offer tremendous diversity of ideas, talents, and bravery. But at that time, it was mostly men who respected each other so much. I was so impressed with how they treated each other that that left a standard of performance with me for the rest of my career. Don't criticize people, help them when they may be going the wrong way. But remember everybody, or most people, have the best intentions. And to take you to today, and I had breakfast at Starbucks with several, five or six veterans were there. 
Mike Coyle was one of them. He's there, and thank you for your service, Mike. It was interesting. The topic this morning was bravery during the Vietnam War. And Big Al came in late. And I asked Mike about his service before he came in, and Mike was telling me Al bought a Purple Heart, and a grenade exploded next to him and damaged his arm. Al wouldn't tell me the story, but Mike told me the story. He says, Al, there was a, another a, a soldier next to him who was severely injured. And Al, even though he was injured, dragged that person to safety. So Al, I don't know if you're here, I saw you in the parade. Al, if you're here, raise your hand. Al's another hero. So we have tremendous number of heroes in our town. So now I'm gonna introduce our Grand Marshal, who is Joseph Finan. Joseph, sitting right up here. I started the program about three years ago of a day about the Grand Marshal. Our first Grand Marshal was Al Wolin, a federal judge. Al was with us for coffee and a veteran too this morning. We have a big group. We call us the Starbucks Coffee Club. And I want to tell you a little about Joseph Finan. He's a resident of Baskin Ridge, born in 1929 in Carbondale, Pennsylvania. A pillar of the community, he is currently an active member of the Warren American Legion. Driven by a sense of patriotism, Joe enlisted in the United States National Guard at the young age of 19. Stationed in East Orange, New Jersey, he proudly served his country. Joe attained the commendable position of sergeant and held the distinguished role of senior chaplain assistant within headquarters of the 50th Armored Division. Joe's dedication to the nation is evident through his honorable service, which spanned eight years. In May of 1956, Joe received honorable discharge, marking the conclusion of his military career. We extend the deepest gratitude to Joe for his unwavering commitment to our nation's security. It is with immense pride that we welcome him as our Grand Marshal. Thank you, Joe. Welcome. And finally, I want to thank the American Legion for coordinating the parade. And now I'd like to call Paul Mulvey up, the American Legion chaplain, to do the invitation. Dear Lord, as we gather for this meeting, give us the use of your gift of peace and understanding that we may approach the matters we must handle with sincere and just hearts. May you watch over and guide our tongues that we may not hurt our friends with whom we work for the betterment of our communities and our country. Keep us always true to the principles on which we were founded. We ask this in your name. Amen. You would like to do the Pledge of Allegiance now? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and in this world, with liberty and justice.
First, a big thank you to our veterans for all you do for our country and all you've done for our country. A shout out to my father, my four uncles who served in World War II. We miss you. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce a, a, a resident of, of Warren and a 42 year military veteran, Dan Mahone. Dan? Let's see if you'll flat 45 minutes from now when we're done. As I always, okay, Joe, I'm done. As I always say at the beginning, can our veterans put their hands up? Everybody standing near one of them, shake their hand. And since it's starting to rain, I'll cut the speech now. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, Township Committee, our frontline fighters, police, fire, and rescue. And everybody here, thank you. So much for inviting me, so much for inviting me to join you today. 